more lists from oh, Gary's book. Oh, wonderful. I love the list. And it makes yesterday's li list look interesting. Really? Yeah, I don't even understand the, the <laughs> new list in his audio book. But um, comments on Gary's book. I have to say that Gary's book was great. I enjoyed everything, including the record world stuff. He's a regular guy with an interesting story to tell. Uh, the stuff about his brother Stephen was very honest, real, and very sad. I have a 19-year-old son who is gay, and I'm proud of him, and I love him. But I also worry about him. Gary articulated so many things that were on the money. Way to go, Bowie. Let the haters hate. Your book was a triumph. <laughs> All right, here's another guy, Rob, and I read it over the weekend. I read the whole thing. It was excellent. I loved all of it. I cried in the section about his brother and his father's death. Gary is the greatest guy ever, and if he were my son, I'd be so proud of him. Wow. Well, what do you think of that? Well, I know uh, Richard and Sal listened to the audiobook. I love to watch John Hine fuck my wife, Mary. <laughs> no many, wonder they're so close. They're very, yes. They're, oh, oh, everything is with John Hine. <laughs> John Hine this, John Hine that. <laughs> Bent over with my hands on my knees, I needed a dick. John Hine draped his arm around my shoulders and whispered in my ear, Fuck me. My body was like rubber, and my legs were shaking. Oh, yeah. Then he stood behind me, and John Hines' balls bounced off my body. Ugh. It was a great day, everything I wanted it to be. My son gave me a huge thumbs up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Gary and John Hine are very close. Gary's in love with John Hine. I love John Hine, too, but not as much as Gary. <laughs> John Hine's huge dick hurts Mary. Tight little snatch. So evidently, John Hine, according to the book, he is fucking married. He gives it to her really good. Mm. Yeah, and also gives it to Gary really good. <laughs> John Hine's a real stud. He's gotten very heavy, though. I was walking behind him coming in to the building yesterday, and John Hine wears this big masculine leather coat. Oh, yeah? It's a big black leather coat. It's very is tough Is it long, looking. or is it a jacket? It's almost like, remember what Rocky wore in the movie, Rocky One, when he's, you know, he's walking around, and he was a tough guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one of those mobster leather jackets. Like a three-quarter length? Yeah, three-quarter yeah. length. Oh, yeah, that, that accents your ass. And I was walking behind him, I go, Jesus Christ, they must have killed 87 cows <laughs> to get this fucking piece of leather. I heard was I down. mean, and he's a big, I'm looking at the size of his legs now. His big, thick legs. <laughs> like a big guy. Well, at least he's eating all the cows they used to make the coat. Yes. He, uh, he eats the entire <laughs> animal. He uses the urine to hunt for other cows. He's something else. I love sucking John Hines' six-inch dick. And we fuck so many eight-year-old boys. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Wow. There. Every year, my dad would fuck me and my brothers to the old-timers game. That will make you a fan for life. Right. Well, there's something about, uh, not about John Hines. But, uh, yeah, we busted Gary's balls yesterday about his uh, lists. And you pointed out, Robin, this list with Gary's jukebox favorites. It seems so absurd to me. But people liked us uh, reading all of these different uh, bits of Gary. Howard, you and the gang riffing on Gary's music list was hysterical <laughs> and brilliant. More so than Colin Quinn's quick insights. I laughed so hard I made my six-month-old baby cry. Oh! <laughs> Those lists and Gary's crack-smoking marble mouth cadence solidified my suspicion that if he was not attached to you, he would still be working at the record store. How does Mary listen to him all day long, every day? Can, here's another one. Can Gary please provide a list of the top ten songs that sound unbelievable on an elevator? <laughs> I know people are proposing different lists he could do. Well, this guy says, I know you love to bust Gary's choppers, but the jukebox songs, it's actually a good idea. There are certain songs that do sound better on a jukebox, although they are probably more... Uh, more place-based than sound-based. I don't know, dude, I, I don't ask me what that he means. Gary he's, he's a guy yeah. who Gary and uh, could have a really good conversation with. My point is, I'd probably think that of all the people who potentially could buy Gary's book, three of them might be interested in Gary's jukebox <laughs> list. These lists, I, I don't. I think the book is very good. I've told yes, Gary. Yes, absolutely. That. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And in fact, it's a laugh a minute. <laughs> but you know, I. It seems like he crowbar. Now I understand. He once pitched a book of lists. The book never s got picked up by any publisher. Uh huh. And he crowbarred in. So these are two books in one. Yeah, he crow like in the middle of the book. It's just pe like I remember when Beth was reading it. She was like, "What is this list? It's a list of songs that Gary wants to listen to on a desert island." I said, "You're kidding me! I didn't see that in my version." What yeah, because it wasn't in the the right. And she said to me, I... Compilation you read. She goes, I turned the page right. I don't care what he listens to on a desert island. I, I, it doesn't make any sense. 
He claims because his whole book's about him working at Record World and he listens to music all the time, it makes total sense. It doesn't. Well, when he, yeah, I mean, again, he talks about how important music was in the family, that everybody listened to music. Everybody had their own music. They, yeah. they belonged to the Columbia House Record Do Club. Do you know anyone who's ever a <laughs> member of the Columbia House Record Club? Do you? We joined every time for the free songs, oh. and then we canceled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, who the hell joined? They had the worst records in there. Jesus. No, you could actually, you know, like they eventually they started carrying the Beatles. And Did they? Yeah, that kind of stuff. And so you joined to get the six free songs, and then you'd cancel. <sighs> So then he starts in and is there, here, here, I have the audio of this. This is, I zone out on this. You t I defy you to listen to this list and understand why it would be important to you. This is Gary's greatest storytelling song, bad storytelling oh, song. Oh, I know what this is. Earlier in the book, I talked about how I used to listen to AM radio in the early 70s, and uh, I would listen to Casey Kasem all the time, and there were songs that, you know, you had to listen to the whole song. They told the story. There was the verse and the chorus and whatever, but you had to get to the end of the song to, to hear how it all turned out. These aren't great songs. These are just sort of the... So you're in the middle of hearing how crazy his mom was, that his brother is ill. And he stops to tell you this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a commercial break to lighten up the you mood. Need, yeah, you need some relief. Yeah. I've been telling you such a sad story. Here's, Here's something. some relief. Here, now you can make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> sort of the greatest bad storytelling songs that I can remember. So, in no particular order, The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia by Vicki Lawrence, Billy Don't Be a Hero by Bo Donaldson and the Haywards, Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves. I mean, what is he doing? I don't know. It drives, he drives me nuts. I know how it relates to the book because he does tell a story about loving Casey Kasem and the era of the... Oh. Music, Ma. the songs that told stories <laughs> and how see. you had, you <laughs> couldn't turn them off because you had to listen till the end to find out what happened. Wow. But nobody needs a list. But, I mean, that's a stretch what you're saying. I hear you, but, <laughs> cause, I mean, you know, my father's dying. Uh, let's play Billy Don't Be a Hero. I mean, what is that? <laughs> Here's my list of songs that have bad stories. Now, these aren't good songs. Yeah. So why bother clear? with a list? I don't know. <laughs> he made a, uh, when did he make this list? And why would he make this list? I mean, who cares? Of all the things to make a list. Because these are songs you should avoid, is basically what he's telling you. Mm. It's Billy, Don't Be Here, Don't Go to Vietnam? It probably was. I mean, I don't... You it know wasn't Don't Vietnam. Go to Vietnam. He went to Vietnam. He gets killed. And at the end, I think his wife doesn't give a shit that he's a hero. She just wanted him to be alive. Right. Mm, see, they gave me the chills. So you don't like that bad story. What's wrong with that just, story? I'm just, wait, seriously, Robin, sort of, Robin, thank you, sort of, go on, go on. <laughs> I'm painting a picture of an era when I used to listen to that stuff, and that was, those were the songs of the day. Oh. Those were, like, when you listen to AM radio, those were those bad storytelling songs. I'm not saying you liked them, it's just what was going on at the I time. I see, you're painting a picture yeah. of the time I think Robin sort of got it, oddly. Yeah, well. <laughs> was you last think I don't get it? She gets it, but she doesn't... <laughs> no, no, you don't verbalize it when you get it. Well, okay. Did you read the list when you were reading the book? Or no. Did you <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for the author. Yeah. Was Frank Kramer's last kiss on that list at any point? No, I mean, I just... I, there were a lot of songs. I never I, heard of that song. Oh, that's such, that's such an awful fucking song. That's probably a little before Gary's time. Was Harry Chapin on there? Uh, it might have been. I think. I, I, yeah, it's the last one. Taxi. Yeah. Also, Run Joey Run is on there. Remember that one? How's that go? What's the story there? The story was that uh, um, she gets pregnant and her father's coming after him with a gun, so he's got to run. What about the Halatachi Bridge? Halatachi. Oh, oh, to Billy Joe. Oh, to Billy Joe. I don't know. It's the worst about story that. ever. It's one. Of, it, it belongs on there. But I mean, again, I could have filled twenty pages with bad songs. Yeah, that should have been on there. I don't know why a publisher didn't pick up your book of lists. Me neither. Um, I, the Harry Chapin song I chose wasn't Taxi. It was oh, far worse. It was Cats in the Cradle. That's what I meant. Cats in the Cradle. Right. No, not Cats in the Cradle. Taxi is the one where he's the taxi driver and right, she's the actress. That's one of the Cats in the Cradle is another thing. And she's one. acting like she, You didn't put Taxi? No, he put Cats in the Cradle. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> Even the list is stupid as the list is. <laughs> You're arguing with the list. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> Good for debate. No, it isn't. Gary Delabate. <laughs> Rhymes with debate. By Cher. Oh, this song's so bad, it'll kill you. Seasons in the Sun by Terry Jacks. 
I shot. I, when he me reads these lists, I hear those lips fighting to seasons in the sun. <laughs> he drives me nuts. I'm not listening to the audio book because <laughs> you can't. I can't listen to him read a book, to, a whole book. Uh, I would buy the book, not the fucking audio tape. Seasons in the sun. Seasons in the sun. <laughs> I can just pick it on the lips fighting. Oh, the audio book's making me mental. I think I resent his audio book. <laughs> you love the book. You hate I love the, the audio book. I hate the audio book. <laughs> oh, when he reads to me. I want to throw up, but uh, and then he's got a record world playlist. This is I don't even know what record this is. world playlist. This is another list. Again, painting a picture right after right. the show. record world, like these are the songs that were sort of big. What are you, Van Gogh? You're painting pictures. Yes, I am. All right. I when I think of these songs, I just put together a list. The songs that just remind me of working at the record store. I mean, what does that mean? Songs that remind him of working at the record store. It means these are the songs right. when I was working in the record store that everybody came in to buy. So in no particular Robin, order. Robin gets me. Uh, oh, <laughs> she gets you, but she knows she it's idiotic. Uh, there's no need for this. We get the, we get the picture. You grew up uh, at a certain point in history, and we get it. Robin completes me. <laughs> <laughs> Only time will tell by Asian. Every breath you take by the police. Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. But he reads these lists. Here's my point, I guess. Who cares? <laughs> He's reading to it's me. It's just a list. It's a list. I do. I, listen, I do have to say, there's uh, six or seven lists in the book. They're like a page. Maybe right, I understand it's a, that. It's, like, it's a huge book. It's, it's like for Beth, I, I totally understand. It's not Beth's thing. Just turn the page. I have a list of songs that start with the letter E. <laughs> I mean, what is the difference between this list and that? <laughs> what is the difference? The, the, the Why not do songs that start with the letter R? The list of songs that give start with the letter songs. R. Give me ten songs. Oh, you asked a question. All right, give me ten songs that start with the letter R. But the list of songs that start with the letter R have not, don't paint the no, or anything in the No, sure book. they do. When you were working, uh, you know, when you were growing up, what were the songs that started with R? Run away. Go ahead. Give me nine more. Round and round. Yeah, I mean, this is all fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> round and round. Round Roundabout. and round. Roundabout. I've been around about. <laughs> He's doing it. He's putting together a list. He's got a list. Sue. What? Run around Sue. Okay. Round Storm round Cowboy. Round here. Round Storm round Cowboy. Here. I'm not saying these are songs I love. That could go these on are the songs. And no, 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 no. These are songs that uh, will start with R. Uh, I don't necessarily like them. That's my favorite part about every list. Right. I'm not saying these are good. Right. I'm not saying that they're my favorite. Right. <laughs> they're not even like they, he doesn't give a shit about these songs. These are actually very shitty songs. Robin, read our love. Read our love. <laughs> Golden earring. Roll Roll. House blues. That's going in the paperback. That list. How about a list of songs that started with R, but also the band's name started with R? Work on Round that list. Round and round by Rat. Say again. Round, round and round by Rat. Right. Very good. Good. Go work on that. Because everyone wants to know that. Songs that start with R, that <laughs> bands also By bands start, that yeah. start with R. That's right. Very <laughs> Who was the hit by the Rockets? Who are the Rockets? Detroit's very best. But Rockets. I don't think it was an all song. All. It has to be an all song. Flashdance, What a Feeling by Irene Cara. Down Under by Men at Work. Sweet Dreams Are Made of This by the Eurythmics. Do you really want to hurt This me? is making me mental. This fucking book. I wish this book would go away already. <laughs> it's making me mental. I never heard... How did the author, uh, you know, I'm the co-author, let him get away with this? It was a group effort. The editor was about oh. it. The author was about it. Everybody liked it. Now, you didn't make up any of these lists. You already had these lists? I did already have these lists. <laughs> What's up, uh, um, do you have a list? Of, remember when you were? I did have to make them up. I remember when you, you were, remember when you were fucking that girl at NBC? You know the Snow Bunny. Yeah. What songs were popular during that period of your life? <laughs> Why not a list there? I could have done that. I right. Done you know, Robin, I actually had the list, but not the songs to go with them. So then when oh. I started, then I had to come up. Why didn't you make a list of songs that were popular when your parents first met, so that we could b understand that era too? Can you put that together for me? Sure. Good. Well, well, yeah, but why not the best makeout songs? Or well, does he do that? Oh, like oh yes. That, if I had the best makeout songs, you'd be like, well, what the fuck is that in your book? How about, <laughs> is there any songs about making out with a guy who has really bad breath and giant teeth? 
<laughs> How about the songs that we played at NBC while I walked back to the hallway with you? I could have done those. <laughs> How about the songs that were popular when we um, flew back from Los Angeles after the Arsenio Hall show and you slept the whole fucking time <laughs> when I needed to talk to someone and I upgraded All you to right, first class? How many times do I have? Where's the list of songs? <laughs> Mom, mother got electroshock therapy. Here's a list of songs <laughs> that uh, are, are about electroshock therapy. Back at that in the time. 50s, they used electric shock. Here's <laughs> the, the songs of the 50s. Here's a shocking song. <laughs> I mean, what, what is that? It would have done Venus, uh, Shocking Blue. <laughs> Very good. Or Electric Avenue <laughs> by Eddie Graham. <laughs> <laughs> These are good songs. I'm not saying they're good songs. I'm saying they're good songs to get electroshock therapy <laughs> to. Or how about Power Station? Right. That was Some a, like it hot. <laughs> Especially on their head. <laughs> exactly. Right. My mother was getting electroshock. This will paint a picture of the times. <laughs> Painting pictures. It's like second grade. Good Lord. What a book. This is some fucking book. I'm going to be on this book for months. <laughs> I'm sorry the show's ending in 19 That's shows. right, because we'll have to meet alone and talk yeah. to ourselves about the book. When my dentist gave me my first set of caps that Howard found offensive, these were the songs that were being played at that era. <laughs> I'm not saying they were good songs. What are you saying? What are you saying? I love because the list isn't really saying anything. Nothing. It says nothing. <laughs> By Culture Club. Come on, Eileen, Dexie's Midnight Runners. Come on, Eileen, uh, Dexie's Midnight Runners. What Come on, the Snow Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> This is songs that remind them of being at Record World. What the relevance does that have? Hungry Like the Wolf, Duran Duran. Boy, this is like a who's who of uh, WLIR New Wave music from the early 80s. Let's dance. Uh, now, what does that mean to somebody living in Kansas? No, it means nothing. 20, you know, 20 people understand that. <laughs> now, my next list are the following songs that Mary's brother loved in 1987. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what was popular when I met Mary. Yeah, <laughs> Mary and I fell in love to these songs. Now, I'm not saying these are great songs, but we fell in love to them. <laughs> I'm not saying I like this. I don't, I don't love this song, but Mary loves these songs. These are songs Mary loved when we fell in love. Smoking in the boys' room, Motley Crue. <laughs> Let's Dance, David Bowie. Oh, man, this one always reminds me of the store. Electric Avenue by Eddie Grant. There you go. She Blinded Me with Science by Thomas Dolby. Africa by Toto. Oh, and that bad music behind him? I feel That's like another thing, because the music behind him has nothing to do with the music he's talking about. It has nothing to do with putting that music on. I feel like uh, I'm listening to Entertainment Tonight with a really bad announcer. Sold a lot of those. The Commissar by After the Fire. The Commissar is also on another list in the book. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> that is a song that reminds me of when I had to get home and give the kids their bath and then vacuum the house for Mary. <laughs> The Commissar. Now, here's a list of the songs that appear in more than one list. Right. <laughs> here's a list of songs that appear in other lists in my book. The Commissar and... Billy, don't be here. No. Uh, Asia. Gilbert O'Sullivan, that one. That <laughs> appears yeah, that's everywhere. Like every Asia's on every list. That's in bad songs. <laughs> also, songs that remind me when I worked at the record store. <laughs> and also, uh, tell a bad story. <laughs> fucking list. <laughs> Did you put a lot of thought into your list? Like you wanted to make sure that you didn't leave anything out? Did you go through like volumes of lists of songs and then narrow it down? Uh, somewhere in the middle. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like labor over it, but I did. I spent a lot of time on it. I'll say that. You didn't labor over it, but you spent a lot of time. It wasn't like I went through, I didn't pull out books and go through every song from the 80s ever made. So you could have left some out. But when you decided on Cats in the Cradle rather than Taxi. Yeah, what was the thought process there, and how long did that take you? Cats in the Cradle, probably a bigger hit. Probably more widely known. Really? <laughs> of course, yeah. he, he never knows what a fucking hit song <laughs> is anyway. <laughs> He's completely <laughs> confused. That was it. I'm telling you, what, 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 just because... You don't even know if... Ca how do you know if Cats in the Cradle is a bigger hit than, than uh, Taxi? You don't know. Did you look up the sales? I can look it up. Look it up. I'll look it up right now. Yeah, look it up and peck away with one finger when you look it up. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy drives me nuts. He had to write a book. <laughs> it's making me crazy. <laughs> Here's a list of songs for when you get very bored in Las Vegas. Because he's the only guy I know who got bored in Vegas. Why not a list of songs when you got bored in Vegas? And why didn't you write about that? I'd like to read why you're bored in Vegas. 
That's the book. All right, would you like they should have let me pick the topics for the book. <laughs> Harry Chapin, Taxi. Go ahead. Went to number 24. All right. Cats in the Cradle, number one. All right. You got me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's jumping it. up and down. And by the way, <laughs> that's also on my list of songs that are good to sleep to at work to. When I'm falling fucking asleep. I can't believe he has a billboard book. He still loves lists. He loves lists. He <laughs> loves counting records. Look what's a bigger hit. <laughs> totally. And there's no doubt about it. That's like the happiest day for me. To be correct on All shit right. like that. You were right. You're not wasting that high IQ for nothing. <laughs> Now, a new list, Robin. Yes. These are songs sung by people who look Jewish, but who aren't Jewish. <laughs> All right. First one is the guy in uh, from Canada, uh, Getty, Getty Lee. Lee. Very Jewish looking, but he is not Jewish. <laughs> right, okay. Fred? The captain in Captain of Tennille. He looks Jewish. By, by the way, Getty but Lee he is, is not. He acts Jewish. He's always wearing that giant yarmulke on yeah. his head. Getty Lee is Jewish. Katie Lee's Jewish? Yep. Uh-oh, he said fooled he, me. Yeah, he did look Jewish to me. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Lee is Jewish? All right, here's a list of singers in rock bands who are Jewish and look Jewish. <laughs> Getty Lee. Wow. Here's a list of guys who don't look Jewish, <laughs> but are Jewish. Billy Joel. He doesn't look Jewish, right? Yeah, he does. He does? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, these lists are harder than I thought. But that would have been funny, those kind of lists. Right. You know. I'm going to, if I write another book, I'm going to have lists. <laughs> like Gary. God. What are you doing there? What are you licking? You're, you're, you're moving your tongue inside your cheek. What is going on there? What are you trying to do? Clean your teeth? You really want to be gross? Yeah, so you're, oh a tiny piece of egg in my gum. so you're using your tongue to clean out your uh, cheeks? Well, it's better than my finger. Right. No, good. Okay. By the way, I just got a note uh, from several people. Billy Don't Be a Hero is not about the Vietnam War. It's about the Civil War. Ah, ooh. You should have known that, Casey Kasem Jr. Did you listen to the whole song? I did, but I didn't know. You wouldn't know that. It's just about war. I want to finish my list of uh, records. Where Gary was working at Record World. Yes, these are the songs. These are the songs. That remind him of the record of store. The record